What's up guys, this is your man Nello. Welcome back to another TBG Trial by Gaming feature. And on today's review, I'm gonna be breaking down the new Acid Rain Civet Company, Aegis Sentinel. Now, if you haven't heard of Acid Rain before, not a big issue. They're a bit more of an uncommon brand, but you can buy them at all your big retailers, Big Bad Toy Store, Pia Club, Locker Toys, AliExpress. There's a lot of choices here, so they're not as uncommon as you might think. Now, if you have heard of this um, new new series that they've been doing it's known as the fav figure and vehicle basically we get a lot of figures that go with um vehicles you can buy uh, to go together as this, either a set or extra figures to basically add to an existing set so really cool stuff now when it comes to this most recent release let me go ahead and show you guys the box art of the sentinel so there we have the actual box art and so it does come in this plastic all of them do and then we have here the actual box art. Everything looks pretty cool. The insignias, the symbols. Um, that is a good rendition of what it actually looks like out of the box. Now this isn't any kind of comic. This is just basically a box artwork that we get here. We see one in the background getting ready to fire. Pretty cool stuff. And that is really what the actual figure looks like. So I like that they don't deviate too much. Pretty good stuff. On the side, just barcodes, more of those symbols. And then on the back, we get treated to a nice look of what actually comes in the package. This isn't necessarily new, but their newer style stuff does come like this now, where you get to see what actually is in the package. Let me see if I can get it. There you go. So as you can tell, the armor, the armor bits, the actual figure itself, to uh, one gun, which we have seen before, if you've been um, looking at the acid rate line, a helmet, some legalese and some other uh, things that it says on the back. Now this is a three and three quarter scale, basically one eighteenth scale figure, and it's pretty badass. And this is definitely one of my favorite releases that I've gotten so far. So let me break it out for you and show you guys what it's about. Now before I get into the entire figure review, I was able to get two, which is pretty badass. But I did want to give you guys just a little background on what Acid Rain is, just in case, again, if you don't know, and so that when I do show you certain parts, you understand kind of why it's there and why they choose to go with this kind of form function. But basically in the world of Acid Rain during World War II, it went nuclear, and not just us bombing somebody, uh, basically every country went nuclear and there was this huge nuclear fallout. Um, that occurred afterwards and so a lot of different military factions kind of became the government where they were at and so this is where we get a lot of the modern day at least in the acid rain world um, storyline a lot of the modern governments that took over you know things like the civic company that you know they're they're a huge arms dealer but they have their own military and such things and so um, they've taken over different resources not just civic company but the omanga and so on and so forth so it is pretty cool stuff and because this all takes place during a time where acid rain is a thing right you know all the nuclear waste went into the air now the the rain itself causes things to you know rust because of how acidic it is and so because of that all of the acid rain figures actually come with a slight wear to them like uh, I don't know if they dry brush it in or what exactly they use but every time you get in your hand you can feel that it feels a little bit on the granulated side and it's it's really cool so when I break it down for you guys and start showing you guys it's not like I have a dirty figure or a messed up figure or the person painted it you know did a bad job once you see it and once you hold it in your hand you really get the idea of what they were going for and you really find a way to appreciate it so now let me go ahead and actually break it down for you guys All right, you guys, so here we have the Sentinel outside of the box. And since I have two, I can show you guys um, basically what he looks like out of the package and what he looks like when he's already built up together. So obviously what we're seeing here in the middle is him with everything on, the helmet, the guns, the armor, and the weapons. Now let me tell you two things. One, this has to be probably my favorite release that we've ever gotten. I was able to get two, but I'm honestly considering getting two more. But I am going to preface that by saying it is a bitch to get his armor on. And while there is a video on the Acid Rain's Facebook and probably YouTube, 
outlining how to do it. It's not that hard, but I would suggest a few different things. All right, so let me go ahead and show you guys on the figure that's already put together. All right, you guys, so this right here is what the figure actually looks like out of the package without any of the armor on. This is the base buck of the entire figure. Now, let me go ahead and tell you guys that Acid Rain has been out for quite some time now. I would want to say at least the last four years minimum. And so with that said, they didn't always look this good. Anatomically speaking, this is fairly correct. I mean, sure, yeah, at the sides we do have some of these joints um, basically at the shoulders, but for the most part this looks pretty good. The old buck that they used to be on basically before they did the toy lines thing was not as accurate. Uh, it definitely didn't look, um, I don't want to say non-realistic, because um, even these don't necessarily look 100% realistic, but they're definitely more on point with what you would want out of these kind of military figures. Um, but this is definitely a lot better. They definitely were able to improve what it is that they were bringing to the table, and these are a lot nicer. Now, let me go ahead and break down some articulation and things like that, and then we'll get into actually putting the armor. I just wanna make sure you guys can see what this can provide you right now that it's easy to move around. All right, you guys, so the head can basically look all the way around, full 360. And it actually has a ball peg at the top, so it can look up <laughs> further than you'll ever really need it. And it can look down perfectly fine. I'm sure some of that's going to go away once you put the helmet on it. But the actual neck has a joint in it as well. So it moves on the peg at the top, but the neck itself also allows it to rotate and get you that extra amount of articulation. Now, shoulders can do the full 360, however, they do have a limit. They go up only about that far, and they come down to full neutral pose, um, and it does seem to have a little bit of that pivot back and forth. So not the best range, but in the most part for holding weapons down range and looking down iron sights, uh, it'll do what it is that you need it to get done. Bicep does twist at the top all the way 360. Single jointed elbows, but you get way past 90 degrees, so that's pretty good. Now for the right hand, you do get that trigger, that trigger style grip. And so you can basically get as far as you need. I don't know even know if that's anatomically correct, but it works. At the torso, we do get a full 360 at the top of the ribs. And then uh, around the waist, you do get a little more and you can get them to go about that far back, that far forward. So really not a lot. In all honesty, it's, it's not a lot, but the top part does make up for it. Now, I just want to note on the other side of the figure, it's exactly the same articulation, but this hand instead is the more natural up down pose it's, it's it's hinged to do this so that's about that's about as good as you can get it and as much as you will need now the hips do let you go about that far back if you want to go further out you can put it further back but you get as about as much as you're going to need and if you go forward you do get the full 90 degrees and actually you can go further if you obviously push the other one further back but in terms of a neutral stance you get a full 90 degree angle now at the top of the hip, you do get the, what is this, thigh pivot. So again, an extra amount of range right there and it moves pretty smoothly. No problems with stickiness with the joints. You do get uh, double jointed knees and yeah, he can sandwich his own legs uh, as you can tell. So that's pretty fucking good. Now at the very bottom, you can get him to look point pretty far down. About as far up as you'll need and then you do get a pretty good pivot actually that's that's a fun if i can get it to there you go that's a phenomenal pivot <laughs> broke his ankle but he, he gonna break somebody else's ankle that's crazy now let's go ahead and jump into the actual all right you guys so before i actually get into anything else i do want to show you guys 
um, basically what the armor looks like by itself before we put it on and then I'll explain obviously the whole acid rain but you can kind of see it for yourself so the helmet does have a visor but you can see the eyes and then you can actually close it over it and it's pretty dope I'll show you guys what it looks like this one seems to be a little bit tighter but on my other figure um, I will be able to show you what the eyes look like Matching the same color as the helmet, we do have this weapon right here. Now, um, I think a lot of the weaponry that they use here in Asterine is really cool because it has this almost World War II-like feeling to the weapons while still being obviously futuristic, but not futuristic enough that these are like laser cannons. These still shoot big bullets. They look very visceral the same way a lot of our older weaponry used to look like. But again, same color yellow. Some of that wear that we see on it, pretty badass, and it looks really big in his arms, but it looks really tight. Right here we're going to see the two shoulder cannons. Um, these ones don't have any yellow on them, but they do have a little bit of that gray color to them. Oop. Pretty dope looking, and the other one is exactly the same, painted the exact same way, but overall pretty dope looking guns. Now here we have the exoskeleton, so these are the trouser pieces. Um, as you can tell, they do have these, uh, I guess we can call them slide hinges. Um, and that's, that's pretty dope, man. Um, hinges at the knees as well that go along with the rest of the armor. And then obviously the way that it holds on. I thought I was going to have to remove the legs, kind of like Joy Toy, but for these ones, it's a bit smoother. You just kind of open it up and put them on. And it's pretty pretty smooth, but um, it's the backpack that really has a problem. Now, you do have to remove the waist in order to put this on, but again, I'll get more into that in a few seconds. But again, same yellow motif, same wear and tear, really nice looking. Now, we have the vest in question here, and again, you can definitely see a bit more of that acid rain wear and tear on it um, than any part of the other figure. It's pretty dope. We got the yellow on it, all the granulated colors all the way around it. It does open up like this, so you basically put his head through and close it with these um, tags in the back. And then as you're going to see, it has some holes in the back, and this is where you connect the piece that holds up the guns. And this is the bitch I was referring to, and I'm about to break it down for you in just one more second. So while this might look a bit more complicated than it needs to be, basically you can connect the arms these are the arms right here. Again, you get more of that yellow going all the way down. Love how uniform it looks. Um, but basically, you can add this on. There you go. To the figure itself in three separate pieces. Both the arms and then this part that goes onto that vest that we saw a second ago. Now again, they both pivot. Um, basically, bicep swivels. And it comes all the way up to 90, which is all you're going to need. And then the fist guard actually goes up and down as well and then again more of these connecting joints that you see here to make it so that when you're posing the character it has some flex right so that's pretty dope and then these um, gun holders right here they don't move um, they don't pivot nothing but um, as you saw on the figure that already has this all placed onto it it looks pretty good and it holds pretty well so in terms of overall paint of the actual figure before I get into what he looks like with the armor. It looks good. Overall, everything seems to look the way it should. We get this red paint for the arms, blue paint for the jeans, gray for the uh, knee pads, and then at the feet, actually, it's the same color as the armor that he's wearing. So even if you take it all off, he's technically still wearing these armored boots. So that's pretty cool. Um, and then you can see that there's this wash that basically goes through the entire figure um, that dirties it up a little bit, darkens it a little bit. These blue pants are basically have this almost brown wash that's gone through all of it. His, you know, arms are a bit, you know, dirty, almost almost like he's a mechanic. Uh, gray on the shoulder armor. Um, and then the headpiece itself looks fairly clean. And his eyes came out pretty good. These are, I believe, painted in, so for the most part, um, I do like the way it looked, and it did came out pretty good. And then on the back, I feel like maybe this right here maybe should have been painted something, but 
for the most part, I think I can just let that slide because it's not something that you'll really notice once you have everything on him. But by himself, maybe it is something to note. All right, you guys. So in order to get him to this, what you see here, you're going to have to do a couple things. Now, I'm not quite sure because I haven't watched the Facebook video of how to do this because I don't like reading instructions. I just like figuring it out myself. So in order to get him here, I do have one suggestion for you. The arms go on fairly smoothly. You just have to take apart the hips from the abs in order to get the pants on. And then everything goes exactly where it should, right? And the circular pieces wrap around uh, the calves. Same thing for his biceps. And then you just kind of want to get in flush uh, as you can tell with the armbands right under the shirt itself and then it holds on really nice all the way around and as you can tell pretty dope looking figure but again to get him here I do want to tell you one thing now as you can tell even right now for mine it's not 100% in there now I was able to get the figure itself to hold on really well in these pegs on the back um, but one of the main issues that I've had is that while I was able to peg in the middle portion of the backpack, the bottom pieces don't seem to hold very well. But currently, this is on tight. It's not going to fall off. It's not coming off. The two guns on the top, oops, come pretty well. Um, pretty good on him. And then, as you can tell, the guns do pivot. Look left, look right. And absolutely no problem. And then let me see if I can do it on camera. Yep, there you go. There is the helmet off of the visor. It looks pretty good to me. And then obviously all the way back down. So these are the tips and tricks to make this work. So as you can tell on the back side of the outer backpack, there's three pegs. And on the inside, on the back side of the vest, three holes. The only one you need to really worry about, the actual one that's going to stay in, is this middle one right here. So this is what my suggestion would be. Take this vest piece, uh, warm up a bowl of water to the brim or a small cup of water for about a minute and then dunk this part only, right? So you can, you can clip it basically with the rim of the cup like that so that this part heats up. It's not going to hurt the figure. It's not going to hurt the actual sculpt. Everything stays together pretty well. And basically what you want to do is make this nice and soft. And so once you've left it in there for about a minute, two minutes tops, pull it out and you're going to see that it's very, very soft. And so what you're going to want to do then is take this piece right here, which you can remove, as you can tell, the arm pieces pretty smooth and then you're going to want to let me go ahead and fix that for you guys and then you guys are going to want to push that in through the back now in the instructions it's actually going to let you know you need to push until basically let me see if i can get it on camera that those two tabs right there not the two bottom ones but Basically, it's almost like a T-shaped joint that's protruding out of there. You want to make sure that the actual T portion goes all the way through this hole right here. And here's the deal. Don't worry about the bottom two. If you can get them in, peg them in. But to be honest, it's really going to be that uh, the big middle one that you want to get through. Because as you can tell on my actual figure, it doesn't hold all that well. It's already out. The only thing that's holding on this back piece is basically the arm that connects to it and then that one big peg that's actually inside of the vest. So if you're able to do that, you'll be able to get a nice snug fit and then it'll hold. Um, I did try to do it without it and just kind of get it in as far as I could without the hot water technique and it just would not stay on. And then to follow that up with the vest, um, it's not easy to get these pegs. Let me go ahead and there you go. These pegs through this hole right here, uh, once it's on the body. So again, it being softer will make it easier for you to actually push these pieces in and get them out on the other side so that you can get a nice tight fit because watch, it just came right off. So it's something that you're going to have to figure out for yourself. 
All right, so while normally I would do some size comparisons for you guys that involve um, figures of similar lines, um, it's not going to give you guys a good representation of how big this is overall. So let me go ahead and give you guys what I have on deck, and let's see if it's something that will give you a good estimate of how big this guy is. All right, you guys, so here we have a Remnant Trooper from the Black Series Star Wars. And as you can tell, this guy is tiny compared to him. Uh, this almost looks like it could be the big brother of Baby Yoda, just in human form. But yeah, it's it's pretty small. Um, granted, the new uh, Remnant Troopers do have a good amount of height to them. But as you can tell, this is definitely a smaller line. All right, and now here we have Jiren. And as you can tell, he doesn't even... That's that's just the body right there. It's about a, his entire head is above the camera again because I had to have this so low for how small the uh, acid rain figures are. But again, three and three quarter inch compared to something this large, it's pretty comical. But again, just to give you an idea of how small this figure is. Now here we have one of the Joy Toy figures. This is a U.S. Special Forces team member. And as you can tell, they're both on the three and three quarter scale. And this looks pretty good. I'm willing to say that Acid Rain runs just a little bit bigger, but for the most part in photos, these are gonna look like they're from the same line. Um, but again, uh, for the most part, they run up really nice. And again, here we have a Storm Collectibles Hamaru. And again, I don't mean to show you guys stuff that's way too big, but as you can tell, um, it doesn't even compare. Um, and actually, to be to be honest, I don't know if it's my camera, but this looks way smaller than through the camera lenses than it does when I look at it. Because when I look at it, I can definitely tell that there's a size difference, but God damn, in the camera, it, it almost looks comical how small it is, but it's still a pretty dope comparison. All right, and for the last two, just to give you guys again a quick comparison, on the left, we have the 1000 Toys Abe Sapien. Again, just a wee bit too tall. And then we have the Midoriya from the Rebel Tech on the right. And as you can tell, he is a fairly small character and he's, I think, the only other one that really fit in the camera. So while he might be small, even he still towers over both of them. So again, just to give you a good size comparison, these are a bit smaller. But again, at this um, basically height size and I guess, price point you are getting what you're getting and i think it's pretty cool and for the most part fairly unique i don't think anyone else in the game is doing this sort of you know acid rain themed you know post-apocalyptic 118th scale soldiers and while joy toy does have a lot of what it's doing including you know regular military to star wars they don't call it Star Wars, but it is, you know, <laughs> it's basically what they're doing. And then uh, even World War II figures that they're coming up, this right here I think is really cool on its own merit and its own background. And I do hope in the future we are able to get um, more content. All right, guys, so the Civet Company Sentinel for me is a must buy. Without a doubt, I would think this is definitely my favorite figure. But if this is your first time buying Acid Rain, maybe buy this and maybe another figure that um, doesn't have any building that you have to do for it. Um, there's a lot of different uh, Sand Trooper options and um, just, you know, uh, they they have a wide variety of stuff that's available that comes with um, you know other kinds of weapons other kinds of vehicles you don't necessarily have to get this one while this is my favorite it's also one of the hardest ones to really put together period um, it was not as easy as I may have made it sound to be but once you have everything together and once you have the look going this is so badass and the thing is they're going to be releasing others from this exact same not just this toy, but from the Civet Company, right? The name of the, um, I guess you could say, private corporation that he's a part of. You're going to get more, not just of this kind, but other figures that I'm going to do reviews on in the future. So it's just going to look more and more badass. So again, if this is your first Acid Rain figure, maybe buy another one just so that you don't get frustrated with this one, trying to put it together and do all that, because that might turn you off. But I think if you buy this and something else that's easier to put together, you're going to love it. And for me, this has been uh, one of the uh, best figures from this line that they've ever released. And it looks like it's only going to get more badass from here. 
All right, guys, so as I mentioned earlier, for me, this is a must-buy. This is one of the best-looking, um, the best playable, uh, just the best overall aesthetic. I know that it has a little bit of its caveats being put together, but once you get everything the way it's supposed to and nothing's coming off and you're able to pose it fully, it looks cool and it has a certain presence on the shelf that even though it's a three and three quarter inch scale, it definitely feels bigger and it feels weighty in your hand, which is pretty nice. It doesn't make you feel like you have this paper thin figure that's gonna break. It really feels like you're holding something quality and again, something that no one else is doing right now in the industry, right? No one's doing this kind of uh, storyline or even this kind of, you know, figure set that has this kind of weathering. And yeah, you could always add it yourself, but it's really cool to see that this company's caveat, or I guess their main uniqueness is, is their world and how they're representing it with their figures. And I think that's something that's super dope, all right? So if you did like this episode, please like, comment, subscribe, share. Let me know your thoughts if you're gonna buy any of these or if I was able to sway you into potentially getting into the line. Again, this is something that you can find at a lot of the same retailers that a lot of this is available at. Big Bad Toy Store, Locker Toys, AliExpress. My personal favorite is Pia Club. That's actually where I got these from. Get the stuff a bit earlier and so far, as far as I can tell, um, their shipping is incredible. All right, guys, so again, favorite one of the series, go out and buy it. Let me know your thoughts as per usual. In my description, you'll find all of my social media so you guys can go ahead and follow me for more content. And then obviously my Patreon if you guys want to join me to help me continue to bring this content to your guys. All right, you guys, as usual, this is a TBG trial by gaming feature and I am Nello. Deuces.